everyone, welcome. Before we start, please read the description. YouTube doesn't allow editing after posting, so if there's any mistakes in this guide, I will write it down there. This guide has two parts, a two minute long TLDR at the beginning, then an explanation about how weight, vertex groups and rigging works. So here we go. Make sure you applied rotation and scale on both the armature and all its related meshes. Then with the armature selected, go to edit mode and create all the new bones you need. Extra knuckles, toes, tabloids, whatever you want. You can extrude the bone by selecting the tip of another bone, typing E and dragging. You can subdivide a bone by selecting it, then right clicking and selecting subdivide. And you can also grow a bone anywhere you want. Position your cursor with shift right click, then hit Ctrl A to add a bone. Once you're happy with the result, Separate the hand bones. Go to edit mode, select them and hit P. Separate bones. Let's rename them hands rig so we don't get confused. Separate the hands from the mesh. Select the mesh, go to edit mode, select the faces you want to separate. Hit P, selection. Rename these hands. Bind the separated hands to the separated bones. Select the mesh hands, shift left click the armature hands, click Ctrl P with automatic weights. Now let's stitch everything together again. Select the hands rig, shift left click to add them to the original rig, and with them both selected, click Ctrl J to join them. Select the hands mesh and add the body mesh to selection, then Ctrl J to join them. Click M and then merge by distance to weld them perfectly back together. Now we need to reconnect the mesh to the armature. Select the body, shift left click the armature, and click Ctrl P with empty groups. The last thing to do is to reparent the loose bones. On the rig, in edit mode, select each hand bone and parent it to the lower arm bone. Ctrl P, keep offset, unless you want them to be connected. Now you can test the fingers and rejoice. The process of connecting a mesh to an armature for us to easily move it is called rigging. The process of telling each vertex how much it is influenced by a specific bone is called assigning weights. Now let's understand how this works and why the common issues happen. To pose an object in Blender, we need an armature, also called rig, skeleton, bones or joints. To make the body move with the armature, each vertex in it needs to be told which bone or bones it should follow. To do this, we use something called vertex groups. We make a new group named exactly like the bone, and all the vertices assigned to that group will move with the bone it's named after. If our mesh doesn't have vertex groups, it won't move because the vertices don't know which bones to follow or that they should move at all. If our mesh has empty vertex groups, meaning it's got groups but no vertices are assigned to them, again the vertices will still not know what bones to follow. You can easily check which vertices are assigned to each group. Go to edit mode, select your group and click select. If there are any vertices in this group, they will be highlighted. For example, if I assign those to the thigh and those, I can now click the thigh group, hit select, and see what's in it. When we export a character from our model viewer, we choose FBX format, and that's because FBX includes the armature and also the vertex groups. So we get a friendly, ready-made model. But not everything has a rig, or sometimes there is one, but it doesn't work. For example, if we exported this belt from our exporter, we get it in an OBJ format. And that's a format that doesn't include vertex groups. In Blender, we can easily check if it has any. They live in the Properties panel, Object Data tab, Vertex Groups. We can see this has no groups. And now I hope we understand this means it won't move with any armature, because it doesn't have the necessary information to know how. So let's make an armature for it vaguely in the right shape. First, apply all rotation and scale. Then let's hit Shift A, Armature. We get this bone. The first thing you want to do is go to the Object Data Properties, which now change to the Armature Properties, and tick this in front, which gives us X-ray mode, so you can see the bones through the object. If you're in Edit mode on the armature, you can position your cursor wherever you want and spawn a bone. Shift A. You can delete a bone by selecting it and hitting X. You can subdivide the bones by selecting one and then right-clicking and selecting Subdivide. You can hit E to extrude the bone and parent one bone to another by selecting the child, then the parent, then control P, and then either connected or not connected, which here is called keep offset. I'm going to parent both the ropes to the ring so I can control them with one bone. Select one, then the other, these are the children. Then select the parent last, control P, keep offset. My rig is ready, I'm going to name it. 
And now I need, in the object, to create vertex groups named after all the bones. We can do this manually if we're masochistic, but the quick way is parenting the object to the armature with empty groups. Take a look. The object right now, no vertex groups. Here's my armature. Selecting the object, selecting the armature, Control P, with empty groups, and there we go. Those groups are empty. No vertex is assigned to any of them, so we can't pose the object yet. How do we assign vertices to the groups? As always, there's several ways. I know one accurate and painful one, and the other one is quick but messy and usually needs some cleanup. Let's start with the accurate way. This bone is named bone001. I'll go to the object, then in edit mode, select all the vertices I want to be assigned to it, select bone001 here in the list, and hit assign. Do you see this weight bar down here? With this, we can choose how affected the vertex will be by this bone. A weight of one is full effect, and a weight of 0.2 means the vertex will only quarter follow the bone and be kind of sluggish. When is this good? When we want it to half follow this bone and half follow another. For example, a vertex on the knee half follow the thigh bone and half follow the shin bone. But I'm sure you can imagine what a paint it is. <laughs> but I'm sure you can imagine what a pain it is to select vertices manually and manually assign them with the correct way to the correct bone. So the quick and dirty way is selecting the object, then parenting it to the armature, control P, with automatic weights. So Blender does all the weights for us automatically based on proximity, how close the vertex is to this bone. But as you can probably imagine, sometimes the results are awesome, and in other cases, not so much. And the reason for that is, Blender's automatic weights are based on bone proximity to the vertex and on loose parts. So let's go to the object, merge by distance and get rid of those 402 vertices which were overlapping and making this into many different parts. And now if we parent the model to the armature with automatic weights, we get something better. Still not great, because Blender is decent at doing this, but the proximity still confuses it. It has no idea that those wooden wings are not supposed to move with the leathery part of the tablet. So there's probably some fancy way of doing this, but here's the method I came up with in 2016 and I've been sticking to it ever since. Please let me know if you know a better one. So since the proximity is the issue, what I do is separate the model and the armature only to the parts that belong to each other. For example, I'm going to take only the leather part and separate it, and only the bone that are supposed to move the leather part and separate them. Now let's take the leather flap, parent it to these separate bones with automatic weights. And this works really nicely. Let's continue. Let's take this entire centerpiece, separate it, Take this main bone from the armature and in edit mode separate it, then parent the model to the bone with automatic weights. Let's do the same with the pouch and last with the bolus. So we have all the parts separately rigged. Let's join them all together again. Join the rig and join the mesh. Now we broke the rig and we rejoined it and we broke the item and we rejoined it meaning right now this item is not in fact parented to any rig. It confused. Do you see all those armature modifiers? have their little man icon in a red color, meaning they can't find the armature to which it's linked. Let's get rid of those. So now each of those groups actually has information. If we go to a vertex group, select it, and hit select, we can see all the vertices assigned to it. So those groups are not empty. All we need to do is tell Blender to connect this mesh to this armature. And we do this with empty groups. Control P with empty groups. That means that Blender creates all those group names in the mesh, or it goes, hey, I already have vertex groups named right after those bones. All I need to do is connect the two. So now, everything moves correctly. Since we broke the armature into many parts, not all of them are moving the way they're supposed to be. For example, I suppose the leather flap is supposed to move with the centerpiece. So let's go to edit mode. Select the first bone in the chain that controls the flap. Hit shift left click on the bone we want to parent it to. Control P, keep offset. Keep offset means I can pull it down if I want, but when the parent moves, it will move with it. There's another way of assigning and viewing weights, and that's called weight paint. If I click the armature, then shift click the body, control tab and go to weight paint, I get a visual display. I can select different bones by hitting control left click and seeing the weights assigned to each one of them. Red means all these vertices are assigned with a full weight of one. Every blue vertex means that it is entirely not related to this bone and will not move with it. And the in-between is self-explanatory. This is a very nice way of visualizing the effect. 
It also used to be awesome in weight paint. And the reason I'm saying used is that until two or three versions ago, you could paint through in weight paint. Meaning, if I painted in the front, it also painted everything in the back. And I could choose whether to do that or not. Nowadays, for some reason, it doesn't work, which made weight painting sometimes be really frustrating. Since we're here in weight paint mode, we can draw with a weight of one, for example. If I have this bone selected, I can draw like this, and now I added these vertices to be affected by it. This is terrible, let's delete it. Right now I want to delete those vertices, because I don't want the end of the chain to move with the ball, of course. It shouldn't. We can remove the weight on those vertices by painting over them with a brush set to a weight of zero, and soften the transition with a blur brush. Let's switch out of weight paint. And finally, if we really need, we can fine-tune things here by checking the exact weights assigned to a vertex. So in edit mode, we select the vertex, we hit N like noggin fogger, go to the item tab, and here under vertex weights, we can see exactly what we have. This vertex is assigned to bone 020 with a weight of 0777. This one, however, is assigned to two bones, bone 018 with an almost full weight and bone 20, which is this one. Meaning, when I move this bone, you see this vertex is misbehaving? So let's go back to edit mode. I want to see exactly how it's misbehaving, and I can only see this with the armature still in effect also in edit mode. So let's go to the modifiers tab and click these two buttons. Now you can see the effects of the armature in edit mode, and now we can easily test the effect of these weights on this vertex. I can either give it more on the bone it's meant to have, or give it less on the bone it's not meant to have, I just click this little X to get rid of it entirely. So why do custom bones, like extra tabloid bones, end up not working as expected when we bind them with automatic weights? Because a WoW model has many bones we forget about, all those bones we never use and are stashed away in other layers. So we bind the tablet to the existing armature with automatic weights, but because of the proximity to all those bones, it ends up being bound to the bones around it. So if we try to move it, we get something like this, which we might not understand, but it's more understandable when we realize it's also reacting to the leg, the twisty bone, this bone, and any one of those. The solution, as we've seen before, is to separate the tabard bones, separate the tabard if we need, bind it to the separate bones with automatic weights, and finally rejoin those tabard bones with the original rig, Control J, and parent them to whatever they should be parented to. In this case, the pelvis bone. Control P, keep offset. If you separated parts of the body, like the hands, select the edge where it says emerge by distance so you don't get weird gaping holes when you put subdivision surface on it, and then you're free to go and make pictures of octopuses playing the piano. I use this method to rig almost anything. Bandages, skirts, toes, animals, mobs and creatures with a rig too simple to be expressive, and the sky's the limit. I can't wait to see what people make with this, and if you get stuck or have any questions, you can come ask them on my streams on Twitch or on our art Discord server, the link is in the description. If this guide was useful for you, please know that I don't give a f f f I don't. I don't care about likes or subscribes, but if you leave a comment and tell me that you've enjoyed it, it'll make me really happy. Let's make pretty art.